There are five things people commonly do that they end up regretting at the end of their retirement. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through these five regrets so you can avoid them and make sure you have the most fulfilling retirement possible. Hey everyone, I'm James Canole, founder of Root Financial, and I'm here to teach you how to get the most out of life with your money. Stephen Covey has this amazing book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of those habits was to begin with the end in mind. So as we're looking at retirement and trying to make this the most perfect, amazing time possible, we have to understand what's our goal for retirement. Well, one of those is probably to minimize regrets. If we want to have that fulfillment, if we want to have that enjoyment, we want to avoid the regrets that may come if we aren't intentional about our retirement. So one of the best ways to do this is to learn from those that have gone ahead of us. What are the common regrets most people will cite at the end of their retirement how can we understand what those are today and then take steps, take measures to avoid them in our own lives? Well, fortunately for us, we have some amazing resources that help shine a light on this. Bronnie Ware is a nurse from Australia and she spent her days taking care of those who were in the last three months of their life. Now, as part of this, she would ask them, what are some of your greatest regrets when you look back on your life? And what she found was there's very common recurring regrets that most people had. She saw that the common themes would surface over and over again. And because of this, she wrote a book of the top five regrets these people have and understanding these is crucial so that we can design our lives, we can design our retirement in a way to avoid these regrets. Now, before you start thinking, hey, what does this have to do with retirement? Isn't retirement about social security and Medicare and 401ks and taxes? Yes, those are the things that fund your retirement, but retirement's not actually about any of those things. Retirement's about creating. It's about being intentional, about designing the life we want to live so we can get the maximum fulfillment and purpose out of those wonderful years of our life. So what we're going to be talking about is what are the regrets people have, the things that would have fulfilled them, that they would have found purpose in, and then how can we navigate in such a way to avoid those and create the retirement we dream about. So let's explore the most five common regrets people have so that we can create a life and create a retirement of intention and purpose and meaning. The first regret that Bronnie shares is she says people tell her they wish they had the courage to live a life true to themselves, not the lives others expected of them. She goes on to say, when people realize that their life is almost over and they look back clearly on it, it's easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even a half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to the choices they had made or not made. So look at your life today. What you are doing, is it because it's your dream and what you want your life to look like? Or is it because it's what's expected of you, either consciously or subconsciously? What are you doing for work? What house do you live in? What car do you drive? What activities do you engage in? It's something that we just get caught up in. And sometimes we just don't take the time to consciously think, is this what I want and what's best for my family? Or is this what my neighbor does, or my brother-in-law does, or what I feel is expected of me based upon my position in life? Now, what's the application when it comes to our working years and preparing for retirement? Well, too often, I see people working jobs they hate to earn an income so they can buy homes and buy cars to impress people they don't even care about. Or they're working jobs they hate because they're afraid to disappoint their boss by going in a different direction. They're afraid to disappoint their coworkers by saying, you know what, this isn't what I want to be doing. So often our daily actions at work and otherwise are to appease or impress, or at least not to disappoint other people who have expectations of us, and unless we're consciously aware of that, we start to live our life in the direction that's not necessarily what we want to be doing. So living intentionally, designing a retirement that you are going to be passionate about, that you are going to enjoy, it takes courage. It takes stepping out of the expectations of others sometimes and thinking about what do I want? What's best for me, for my family, for those I care about? How can I design a life in a retirement that pursues that? as opposed to pursuing what I think I need to be doing for work, what I think I need to be living at and what home that might be, what I think I need to be driving, what I think I need to be doing with my time. Be intentional about this because if not, what Bronny shared was a number one regret was living to fulfill someone else's expectations as opposed to those you actually cared about. The second most common thing that Bronny found is she says that people's regret, the second biggest regret was, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Now, there's nothing wrong with hard work, of course, unless it comes at the cost of time with family or friends or things you care about even more. 
She went on to say this. She said, all the men I nursed deeply regretted spending so much of their lives on the treadmill of a work existence. Now, I think this is something a lot of people struggle with. I know I personally do. It's easy to get caught up in work. It's easy to get excited about the good aspects of it, but really for identities to get lost in what we're doing for work. James Clear, who's the author of Atomic Habits, has a wonderful question that he encourages people to reflect on often. And that question is, what are you optimizing for? What are you optimizing for? Are you working the way you're working because it's somehow benefiting you and your family in a tangible way? Or are you just doing this because it's part of what you've always been doing? Are you optimizing for another promotion or a higher income or another job that you don't really enjoy that's not actually the purpose of what you want to be doing, but that's somehow what you're spending your time optimizing for? Or are you optimizing for things more intentionally? Again, the time with family, the time pursuing what's important to you, your health, other factors like that. Now, as you're listening to this, what are you optimizing for? You know, knowing that one of the greatest regrets people have at the end of their lives is spending so much time at work and knowing that many of us collectively spend so much time at work. As you think about what are you optimizing for, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Be sure to leave a comment below and I'd love to see what you all have to say. That we have to understand with work. There will always be more projects, more emails, more expectations. And again, work can be an amazing thing. I love what I do for work. I love the work that I get to do. I know many of you also love what you get to do for work. But it's helpful to understand the regrets of the dying. The regrets of the people looking back on their lives was they wish they hadn't spent so much time in work. So is what we're really doing today because it brings us maximum fulfillment, because it brings our families maximum fulfillment, or is it what we're caught up in? Are we working for work's sake when we should be focused on being intentional with our time and pursuing other things as well? The third thing that Bronnie shared when she said, here's the top regrets of people looking back on their lives. The third regret is people say, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings more. Now, when she asked to explain this, she said, many people suppressed their feelings in order to keep peace with others. As a result, they settled for a mediocre existence and never became who they were truly capable of becoming. Many even developed illnesses relating to the bitterness and resentment they carried as a result. Now, I think this is something common that we all naturally have. We all naturally don't want to rock the boat. We naturally want others to like us. We want to be pleasing to others. But what we find is you can take that to the extreme. And the third greatest regret people had when looking back on their lives was they wish they hadn't done that. They wish they had the courage to be themselves and express their feelings more because what they found was that it was exhausting. It was suppressive to constantly be living to please a boss or to please a coworker, to please a neighbor or someone with expectations of you that you really don't even care about. But that's an exhausting way to live that many of us fall into the trap of doing. So as you're examining your life, whether it's your career or your retirement or the things that you're doing, how can we be aware of that? How can we be aware that it's uncomfortable sometimes to express fully what we want to express or to be fully who we want to be. But when we look at those who have gone ahead of us, their number three regret was doing that. How can this start to shape some of the things we do with our lives today? Hey, real quick, if you're watching, you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I want to make sure you get more content just like this so you can have the best retirement possible. The fourth thing that Bronnie found when she was interviewing the dying is they said, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. She went on to say, often they would not truly realize the full benefits of old friends until their dying weeks and it was not always possible to track them down. Many had become so caught up in their own lives that they had let go of golden friendships and they had slipped by over the years. Now we all instinctually know how important relationships are, how important community is. We've all been told, hey, the quality of your relationships is largely going to determine the quality of your life. But the thing about relationships is they're not urgent. You know, that deadline at work, that thing you have to do, that chore that needs to get done, that's very urgent. It's in front of you. It's requiring your full attention. Friendships aren't that way. They're extremely important, but they're not urgent. Now, the tie into retirement here is when you're retired, you have all day every day to choose what you want to do. What a wonderful time to be intentional about how can I maintain these wonderful relationships? How can I reestablish some of these relationships that had slipped? But understanding that people on the other side of retirement people in their final days saying, I wish I hadn't let those relationships slip is so important and to understand what can we do today to pour into the relationships we have, to rekindle some of the relationships that have maybe started to slip away. In doing so, 
we're gonna have a more meaningful, a more purposeful, a more enjoyable retirement, but it takes that intention to maintain those relationships throughout our lives so we don't look back and regret the friendships we let slide. And finally, the fifth regret that Bronnie found when she interviewed those who were on their deathbed is they said, I wish that I let myself be happier. Bronnie goes on to say, many did not realize until the end that happiness is a choice. They had stayed stuck in old patterns and habits. She found that those that were happy, they made up their mind to be happy. Those that weren't happy, they made up their mind not to be happy. Now granted, everyone has different circumstances. Many people have different lives. Some people have lives that are much harder than others, but what she found was that happiness was a choice. And as you retire and you have all the time in the world, what are you gonna do with that time? Are we gonna stick ourselves in front of a TV and look at the doom and gloom and look at everything going on? It's probably gonna to lead to an unhappy life. Are we gonna to choose to pursue things that are good? In doing that and making the choice to be happy, what we find is that happiness is very much a decision that we all have to make for ourselves. So ask yourself, what makes you happy? What makes you unhappy? How can we do more of the former and less of the latter? How can we do the things, especially in retirement, when we have a blank slate to create what we want to create, how can we ensure we're both pursuing the things that make us happy, but also simply deciding to be happy, just deciding to be grateful, deciding that we're going to have the type of life that we're not gonna look back on one day and regret allowing ourselves not to choose happiness. So understand that it's a very simple exercise. There's nothing complicated about it, but again, as with all these things, it takes intention. It takes looking at your life and understanding what do I want to create with this thing called life so that I can get to the end and look back on it and say, that was a great life. That was a great retirement. I did the things I wanted to do and I avoided any of the common regrets that people commonly make. So again, what does this have to do with retirement? Why am I talking about this? Am I supposed to be talking about money? Yes but money only exists to support this life we're trying to create. Money only exists as a tool to help us live in the way we want to live. So if we're not living the right way first, living with intention, living with happiness, no amount of money can cover that up. So it doesn't do you any good to have the best tax strategy, the best social security strategy, the best investments, the best allocation. None of that is any good if it's not supporting a bigger vision for a wonderful, meaningful, purposeful retirement. So getting this right is super important. It's crucial. So when we're designing the investment strategies and the tax strategies and the withdrawal strategies, it's all being done to support that vision of what a meaningful retirement would actually look like. Now, seeking to avoid regret is one way to create a fulfilling retirement. On top of that, if you wanna understand the five things people wish they knew before retiring, be sure to check out this video here so you can understand more ways to create a wonderful retirement. Once again, I'm James Knoll, founder of Root Financial. And if you're interested in seeing how we help our clients at Root Financial get the most out of life with their money, be sure to visit us at www.rootfinancialpartners.com.